tonight. Had a beautiful sunshiny day, a little windy and cool, but other than that, beautiful day. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing us home safely once again, watching over us and keeping us. Lord, pray for all our families, our loved ones, excuse me, and our friends. And Lord, uh, I pray that you'd be with Brother Roger and uh, Rush Limbaugh with his illness and all my preacher friends and their wives. And Lord, uh, pray for uh, Derek, Lord, that you continue to strengthen him, Lord, and bring him through the recovery process. And uh, pray for his mom and her, her arm. And Lord, that you heal her. And I pray for Kim that you watch over her and that you'd heal her up completely. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, we know we're unworthy, and uh, but we do thank you for it. Lord, be with us tonight as we continue on in the book of Ezekiel. And uh, Lord, we we'll thank you for it. Bless all the folks that tune in, Lord, and that listen. Lord, they might get a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right. Hello, everyone. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Let's see what she's got on the for a song tonight. Excuse me, how I was dressed. Shut up and sing. 
When upon life's billow you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with the load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings, money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journeys and Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Okay, good evening. Oh, oh. Bye, everybody. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, it's just counting my blessings. Just counting my blessings. <laughs> All right. Now, if you got your Bible, we're going to be in Ezekiel chapter 8 tonight. Hey, man. Ezekiel in chapter 8. I was thinking about something. Uh, didn't feel too well uh, this afternoon when I got home. I laid down a little bit and dipped out and woke up, was thinking about some things and about Babylon while they were down in captivity there and, and uh, the things that they had going on in Babylon. And I remembered some things that we had learned years ago how the the walls that were built around Babylon were so high and so wide that they could race chariots around them side by side. Think about the manpower it took to build that. That's one of the seven wonders of the world. And uh, another one not so much as not mentioned as much was a tunnel where they tunneled tunneled under the Euphrates River so that they could join the uh, two palaces together and uh, it had to be quite a feat. But anyway, we're going to look at chapter 8 of Ezekiel tonight. I remember my pastor saying that they also had what you call pucatoriums uh, where People would go in and they'd have a banqueting hall and they would eat and eat and eat and eat until they couldn't eat no more until they vomited it up and then they'd eat again. It was a real issue they had. But anyway, 
I remember hearing that years and years ago when I was trying to find the pucatoriums there. I found the tunnel and I found the walls, but couldn't find the pucatorium. Well, can you imagine Daniel and Ezekiel and Jeremiah, the godly men that were down there uh, seeing all this stuff and them loving God and trying to be holy? But you know what? They were able to do it, so that means you and I in this day and age can do it too if we really want to. All right, well, chapter 8, I'm going to read to you again the theme of it by Dr. Vernon McGee. said, the theme is a vision of glory, temple destroyed because of defilement. Now we come to the second major section of the prophecy of Ezekiel. In this division of the book, the complete captivity of Jerusalem and Israel will become a reality and the glory of the Lord will depart from the temple in Jerusalem. In chapter 8, Ezekiel has another vision of the glory of the Lord. The vision transports Ezekiel to Jerusalem and God's glory appears in the temple at Jerusalem. The question always arises, was Ezekiel actually transported to Jerusalem? I will give you my viewpoint, but this is an issue on which no one can be dogmatic and on which few agree. One answer to the question is that Ezekiel simply saw a vision and he saw it there by the river Kibar. A second explanation is given that Ezekiel literally went to Jerusalem and walked around and saw all that he records here. I do not accept either of these interpretations. I believe that Ezekiel's experience was very similar to the experience that the apostles Paul and John had. Paul said that he had been caught up to the third heaven, 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 3. It is my feeling that that occurred at the time he was stoned in Lystra in the Galatian country and was left for dead. I believe he actually was dead, that God raised him from the dead, and that at that time he was caught up to the third heaven. John also, as recorded in Revelation 4, was caught up into heaven. In this, I feel John is a picture of the rapture of the church, in which all true believers will be caught up to be with the Lord. Chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation frequently mention the church. But after John's experience in chapter 4, the church, the called out body, is no longer mentioned. She is now the bride of Christ, the church was, which is no longer on earth, but is with her Lord. Therefore, I see John's being called up into heaven as a picture of the rapture. I remember Paul said in uh, 2 Corinthians that whether in the spirit or out, he couldn't tell. So when he was called up. Ezekiel was actually called up as Paul and John were, but I do not think that the people at Jerusalem and the surrounding area were aware that he was there. We're not dealing with the natural, and I cannot offer you a natural explanation. God called him up, and what happened was supernatural. Ezekiel was sitting among the elders. I imagine it was a pretty doleful crowd there. So in chapter 8, verse 1, we'll begin. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord fell, up, fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward, fire, and from his loins even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of mine head. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem. So it says here that he lifted him up between the earth and the heaven. And it says that he brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem. Amen. So believe that he was seeing the vision and looking at it, and he was not literally there from what I can tell from the scripture that I read. He says to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. 
And behold, the glory of God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes away toward the north and behold northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said, furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here. So he's seeing this, what's going on, but he's not literally there from what I can tell from the scripture, but he is seeing this, amen, and the Lord's allowing him to see it. And he says, the great abomination that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. When I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in. And behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw and behold every form of creeping things and abominable beast. All the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. I likened that when I first read that years ago to the television. Amen. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jaazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? You know the we said before that the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. He said that the night is like noonday to the Lord. You might think you're getting away with something in the dark, but he sees it like it's daylight. Then said he unto me, son of man, has thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say the Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tamaris. That was an ancient goddess. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. Now, this is going on inside the walls of the temple. No wonder the Lord was bringing them down to Babylon in captivity. Amen. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. I mean, they were in total idolatry, amen? Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it the light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence, and have returned to provoke me to anger, and lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. I mean, they had defiled the temple of the Lord. The Lord said, he can't stay there. You know, that's the way it is in some of our churches today. We bring in every worldly thing there is. Amen. And grieve the spirit of God. We, uh, we're in our chambers of imagery, amen? You think about being in the chambers of imagery. The stuff you watch on TV, the movies you watch, amen? amen. Chapter 9, 
The theme is Shekinah glory it prepares to leave temple. Shekinah glory fills the holy place. Shekinah glory departs. In chapter 9, this kind of glory prepares to leave the temple at Jerusalem. I believe that from the days of Manasseh, there was the coming and going of the Shekinah glory. God is merciful. He doesn't, in a petulant mood, give up on people. God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. Amen. Chapter 9, he says this. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lies, lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's inkhorn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of God of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others, he said, in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly the old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. So God had placed a mark on those that were crying out against the abominations and the filthiness and the rest he was destroying. I believe that even today, if we will just be holy and do what's right, when the judgment of God comes, he will spare us. Amen. As he destroys the wicked. And he said unto them, defile the house and fill the courts with slain. Go you forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them. And I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, oh, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood. My friend, don't you think today that America's, the land of, in America is full of blood, of murdered babies that have been aborted by so-called doctors and mothers? Don't you think that we, listen, we were talking about it today. We have the president in office and vice president and all the wicked people in places of authority in Washington today for what we deserve. We deserve worse. We really do. God gave us a little reprieve, gave people a chance to get things right when president Trump was in office, but all they thought about was their fortunes. What we have today is less than what we deserve, but it's defiled. America is defiled. Then said he unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. The land is full of blood and the city full of perverseness. For they say the Lord hath forsaken the earth and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, mine eye shall not spare. Neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Isn't that a terrible thing to realize what's, what's coming because of man's sin towards God and defiling the temple? And we wonder why our churches are the way they are today. 
we've left off to where we of being a holy people before the Lord. Amen. Uh, let's see. Got about four minutes. But I'm going to cut off there. For one reason, I'm not feeling very well. I guess that's the main reason I'm cutting off. Amen. But uh, I hope all is well with everyone here. And we'll pick back up. In chapter 10, Lord willing. On Thursday. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Grace Heavenly Father, we thank you for the folks that have tuned in. Lord, I pray that you would deal with our hearts. Lord, help us to be a holy people. Lord, we say we're Christians. Yet, most of us don't dress the way a Christian should dress. Most of us, we bring in the TV into the home with all the filth and the garbage and set it before our children. Then we wonder why they turn out wrong. We don't do those things, but we have pleasure in them that do. Lord, in our chambers of our imagery. Lord, help us to be holy, for thou art holy, and without holiness no man shall see thee. So I pray that you give us strength and wisdom, Lord, that we might get our hearts right, prepare our hearts to please you, and Lord, that you could bless us. Watch over our loved ones and all our family members. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right. Y'all have a good evening. I hope I feel better too, Ruth. Thank you. Uh, I think it might be my screensaver. <laughs> anyway, Tommy knows what I'm talking about. Y'all have a good one. Good night.